With the coronavirus now declared a pandemic by the World Health Organization, what's the best way to protect yourself from contracting it? Should it spread even wider? And what's the truth about the virus as opposed to all the hype and hysteria? Here to tell us what we really need to do is infectious disease specialist at Kaiser Permanente here in Washington, Dr. Michael Horberg. Doctor, thank you for being here. Thank you so uh, much. I want to start with the World Health Organization declaring this a global pandemic. What does that mean from the perspective of a healthcare provider? Well, I think what it means for a healthcare provider is that hopefully it means more resources will be put into the situation so that we can do the things we need to do increase testing, better inform the public with science, put money into development of a vaccine, and hopefully other treatments. All of this raises concerns with the hope, though that it doesn't raise panic. Mm. Yeah, President Trump last night addressed the country. He had this to say about who is at risk for the coronavirus. I want you to react. The vast majority of Americans, the risk is very, very low. Young and healthy people can expect to recover fully and quickly if they should get the virus. The highest risk is for elderly population with underlying health conditions. In general, older Americans should also avoid non-essential travel in crowded areas. So far, the most extreme cases, uh, uh, severe cases of those who have, uh, that have caused death, have been found in elderly patients. Is this what we can expect going forward? We hope so. We do see it's much worse in the elderly population. I'm not sure to say, though, that the risk for the rest of the population is very, very low, because that sometimes leads to complacency and not paying attention to preventive measures. Mm. Remember, most of us have elderly neighbors, family members, mm. friends, and you would hate to have yourself get infected. You have no symptoms, maybe a right. slight cough, and yet you gave it to them, and they develop a severe illness. Yeah. That is a tragic consequence. Yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, a new National Institutes of Health study indicated, and this came out this week, that the coronavirus could remain viable in the air for up to three hours post-aerosolization while remaining alive on plastic and other surfaces for up to three days. If, is this virus more contagious than we were first warned of? Whether or not it's more contagious, we know the viability is strong, mm -hmm. and we know that, in fact, it has greater degree of potential fatality. That's why common sense things are in place. If you're going to cough or sneeze, cough into your elbow, use a tissue, immediately dispose the tissue, mm -hmm. and then wash your hands with good soap and water for 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Clean surfaces daily. With what? With either a, a diluted bleach solution or many of the common uh, wipes that have with them a uh, good degree of bleach and alcohol mm -hmm. in them. These are very good common okay, but sense doctor, if it can if it can float in the air for up to three hours, wouldn't it be advisable for the public to wear masks in public areas? The problem with masks are, well, there are a few. One, uh, one, that the mask itself can get dirty, then you touch it, you go more to your face and hands, and suddenly you're getting yourself more infected. Mm. Two, if you're in well-ventilated locations, the likelihood of you getting a particle is significantly lower. That's why we're seeing cancellation of indoor, heavily indoor activity. Well, even outdoor events, parades in my New Orleans, they're canceling St. Patrick's Day parades in New York. St. Patrick's Day, well, that's out of that's, doors. Yes, but there's heavy concentrations of people in tight spaces. Mm. And that's a different situation than saying taking a walk in the woods. Okay, given this latest news about how long the virus can last on surfaces, uh, is there anything else people should be doing besides cleaning them down? Or uh, when I get on planes, I'm like Hazel. I start cleaning every, you know, I'm cleaning every surface. Is that, is that an overreaction or am I doing I, some I, good? I don't think it's an overreaction at this point, but I will say I'm not sure I'd, I'd be flying. Really? And I sure as heck not going to be taking a cruise. Not at all. You would, you would cut out flying. I think, airplane. well, right now there's so few people on planes, you're probably okay, but except for long distance, and I wouldn't take that risk. Mm -hmm. You're in a closed situation, recirculated air. Mm -hmm. People are coughing. People mm -hmm. are touching food, each other. Yep. It, you, it's an unnecessary risk to take. 
especially if you're immunocompromised or if you are of advanced age or if you have lung disease, mm -hmm. lung illnesses. Doctor, I want to share this with you. Earlier this week, the director of the CDC's National Center for Immunization and Respiratory Diseases had this to say about the spreading of the coronavirus. This virus is capable of spreading easily and sustainably from person to person, and there's essentially no immunity against this virus in the population. It's fair to say that as the trajectory of the outbreak continues, many people in the United States will at some time, either this year or next, be exposed to this virus, and there's a good chance many will become sick. Now, this projection of people coming into contact with this coronavirus this year and next seems longer than first anticipated. Uh, as we said earlier, public events are being canceled. You would recommend then barring travel if you don't have to, and staying away from all public events? What about restaurants? What about groceries? I think that's going to become a very tough situation. As we all are knowing that more and more we're going to have to uh, buckle down on this and take responsib responsible results so that we can control the virus, bend down the curve. Mm -hmm. If the numbers of people that are getting seriously ill keep going up, at some point we're going to be, we're going to overwhelm the health system, and that's an even worse crisis. And, and, so, and that means uh, you don't have the hospital beds, you don't have the personnel, or the personnel gets sick. Sick, even more so. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or the, and the caregivers get sick. Mm. So, and all that, that downstream right. effect. Uh, additionally, you don't. We won't, if we do develop medications, we won't have access to those medications. Mm -hmm. We'll be overwhelmed, and so a little bit of caution now is going to be right. worth. You For know, how an long? For how long, doctor? How long? I wish we I do could this? give you an answer today. I don't think I can. I think this is going to be on a month by month considered basis. We're going to have to look to our leadership in the CDC at the NIH to give us good results. And frankly, even local governments knowing the, the pandemic in their community versus other communities, the, the differentiations and the regulations may in fact have to be different. Wow. We're just in such an early stage now, we can't give you good definitive Yeah, we don't answers. know. We just don't know how this is going to play out quite yet. Uh, to date, the U.S. has confirmed 1,200 confirmed cases and so far 38 deaths. With a virus of this nature, how fast do you con expect this to spread? And I want you to compare this to the uh, H1N1 uh, crisis back in 2009. Just to put it in context, CDC estimated 59 million Americans contracted that virus, uh, 256,000 were hospitalized, 12,000 died in a year. Compare it to the coronavirus. I don't think we can tell you that today. What we know is this. It is, it, it progresses rapidly. It is going without testing, without appropriate quarantining, good social distancing, good prevention what efforts. What does that mean, social distancing? Explain that to people. They hear the term, they don't know quite what that means. That's fair enough. Uh, social distancing means that we don't want you to put yourself in direct immediate contact. Sometimes putting, taking yourself out of crowded situations, taking yourself out of your family out of situations where there could be easy transmission of the virus to you. Again, if your kids get it, they may not even know they've got it or it's a mild cold. But grandma but, and grandpa. grandpa could get it very seriously ill. Mm. So social distancing, a good distance, what, two yards, so six that, feet? That's what, we are, that's what we're saying at this time. You know, a wave is a save. Uh -huh. um, you want to be friendly. People do want their social contact. We understand that. You can't live in, isolate, in true isolation, mm -hmm. but you got to be smart about it. Right, right. Um, clearly, this is going to be worse than influenza, but which I heard some people erroneously say, oh, this isn't, you know, this is just like the flu and it claims 20, it's already claimed 20,000 lives. Okay, fair enough, but this seems to be more communicable and more deadly for the elderly. It is clearly more deadly. It is 10 times more deadly okay. than the flu. Uh, we're surprised and happily surprised that it doesn't affect, seem to affect seriously the very young. That does not mean to say, though, if you're very young, you're immune. Yeah, because there have been the 19-year-old kid in Seattle who died, exactly. It, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, but it does seem definitely to be worse in older people, immunocompromised people, people with lung, people with underlying lung disease.
especially if they're older. Yeah, the, the Chinese are, are crowing. Uh, they're, they're saying, look, we, we brought this under control. Well, you started it. <laughs> let's, not, let's, not, let's not pretend it didn't I, I start there. The, but the, my, my question is, is there any lesson to be learned from them that we can absorb? But given the draconian measures they took to contain the virus, I, I, I don't know if there are any lessons that are really Yeah, I used. think that's a real hard issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I am not a social scientist, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to get, get into all that, uh, except to say that our society is an open society. Mm -hmm. And we rely a lot on individual taking responsibility. Oh. Again, <laughs> I know I sound like a broken record, but hand washing, cleaning surfaces, oh. not coughing in people's faces. Yeah. You know, smart things that we do for a lot of other illnesses, a lot of other social situations need to be followed. I'm going to bring something up that I've been looking into just in my own thinking. Um, are you concerned, as a specialist in this field, that the anxiety that is being created and some of the hype that's coming from my peers in the media, that perhaps... We're creating such worry among people that we're actually weakening their ability to deal and fight the virus. I hope not. I, I think that we... But anxiety does play a role. Oh, I think anxiety always plays a role. Again, not panic, but good prevention and good practice. Mm -hmm. we, don't want, we don't want to create unnecessary stresses on, on our own immune system, on others' immune system, on the health system. Mm. But we have to be smart about it. We have to raise awareness. This is a unique situation, and we have to change some social norms in order to bring down the virus, flatten the curve, so that it is manageable. Mm. You think it's going to change American life severely over the next couple of months, at least? Well, at I, least. I mean... <laughs> We've seen the cancellation of mm -hmm. basketball tournament of the NCAA, and my own Boston University is in it this yeah. year. <laughs> um, it. We've seen uh, we've seen the NBA, the NHL, uh, Broadway broad, movie openings, Broadway movie openings. But hopefully, by doing these things now, we are preventing worse issues later. Okay, we'll leave it there. Doctor, thank you so much for the time, My for your pleasure. insight. You can get the latest information on the coronavirus and tips for prevention at the CDC website, cdc.gov.